Many thanks, Alvaro, and many thanks uh, both to you and Iñaki for the organization of this conference, this virtual congress, and also for steering up this research project. It has been for me a great pleasure and honor to cooperate and interact with so many colleagues in this fascinating uh, issue. And I hope to be able to cooperate with you and with CU in the future. With no further ado, let's move up to set up the scene. It's undeniable that in recent years, technology has induced many reforms within tax administration. And with that, it has dramatically changed the relationship between taxpayer and tax authorities. Next slide. However, this was something that struck me uh, since the start. Uh, most of these reforms are geared uh, I would like the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this struck me from the very start. Most of these reforms are short or medium term focused, and they are focused on how technologies can enhance the current state of affairs, reduce time or reduce, reduce uh, costs. This is positive, but there is no sound research on the long term and namely on the optimal interface between tax and technology. So my research project was in rupture with the mainstream uh, scholarly literature to propose a paradigm shift in the relationship between tax administration and taxpayers from the mainstream enhanced cooperation to the technology enabled no cooperation. So what I'm proposing in my paper is from enhanced cooperation to zero or no cooperation. And this is what I'm trying to explain in the next 13 minutes. So let's move to the basis, to the state of the art. We have this unparalleled relationship between the taxpayer and tax authorities that was permitted by the advance of technology. Next slide, please. We have moved from uh, the, the following slides. Uh, we have moved from basic relationship to advanced relationship, and more recently, some jurisdictions have moved to enhanced cooperation. Technology has been fundamental on this pathway and introduced several uh, improvements. However, there are also disadvantages. Next slide. One of the best summaries of these advantages is this report that you see on the left side of the screen and whose main sentences are transcribed on the right side of the screen. This is a report from the, um, from the World Bank in 2019, which is called Handbook on Tax Simplification. And this report from an official uh, recognized institution says and points out that there is this false no notion among some tax administrators that the more reporting requirements, the higher are the compliance by taxpayers. And also that there are vested interests that seek to increase contact between tax authorities and businesses for the purpose of rent seeking. Some tax administrations tend to believe that the more information and the more forms and signatures, the more compliance. Nevertheless, this is not always the case. So, I mean, even uh, institutions such as, as the World Bank see that there are problems in advancing with technology and increasing cooperation between the taxpayer and tax authorities, namely at the level of costs, compliance and administrative costs, and at level of protection of fundamental rights, namely in the dimensions of legality, privacy, and the right to be heard, as I identify further in my paper. This happens also because we have currently a unidirectional way of thinking. We only think how technologies can improve tax administration and tax systems. And in my view, a tax system is always taken as immutable and the technology needs to allow its better functioning. Next slide about my proposal. My proposal is that there is a need to think the other way around and we need to start thinking 
at least bidirectionally. We need to start looking at the existing technologies and what they allow, and then see how we can rebuild the tax system in the long term, taking full advantages of what technologies have to offer. These, regardless of whether the tax system of the future is based on income, consumption or health, or even regardless of whether the tax administration function is performed by public entities or by private entities. So my research at this point, and there are limitations to what we can do, was focused on two main issues. What would be the principles, the guiding principles of this new system, and what would be the new structural features? Let's focus first on the principles, and then I'll move to the basic features. Principles. Principles are important not because they are principles or because um, we are uh, in the academic venue, but they and these principles serve, and I hope that they will serve in the future, as the benchmark against which all policy decisions on scrutinizing and devising this tax system of the future can be assessed. In my paper, I identify the following principles neutrality, efficiency, certainty and simplicity, effectiveness, fairness, and administrative feasibility. Neutrality. Insofar, the tax system, the technology-driven tax system should be neutral in the sense that it should not impact the taxpayers' behavioral patterns and should avoid distortion of the competition. Insofar as possible, it should be also politically neutral, which is not the case in most tax systems, also because of regulatory goals. Efficiency. The system should allow the collection of revenue with the least possible costs, comprising both administrative and compliance costs. Of course, one should exclude the one-off costs of setting up the system. Certainty and simplicity. The system should be hassle-free and the sense of automatic and not depending on options or elections, neither by tax authorities nor by the taxpayers. Effectiveness. The system should opt for solutions lead to, a, to the least amount of cost per unit of collective revenue. And this is a very important baseline assessment of the tax system in the future. Fairness. And this is important, especially in the technology driven tax system. The system should be based on the widest possible number of manifestations of one's ability to pay. And finally, administrative feasibility. It should be something that is possible to implement in a relatively um, uh, reduced time frame and that can fit in reality. Now, now that I've devised the benchmarks for assessment of policy options in the future, based on technology, I move to the design of the basic structures of the system. And before going on that next slide, I would like to quote one philosopher, and it's one philosopher that maybe it's not that well known by us. It is very known in the Arab world, but not in the Jewish Christian world, and which is Heben uh, Kaldum, uh, and he wrote the um, the Mukadami, uh, sorry, Mukadima on the 14th century. And one thing that he noted in this uh, in this monography is that it should be known that at the beginning of the dynasty, taxation yields a large revenue from small assessments, so a lot of money from a small number of people. At the end of the dynasty, taxation yields a small revenue from large assessments. This holds true also for the tax system in the future. Likely, we are putting still an emphasis in a small number of manifestations of one's ability to pay or income flows, and if we spread the tax, the function of the tax system 
in more manifestations of the ability to pay or more income flows, we will get a more resilient tax system. Next slide, please. So one of the features, uh, the previous one, yes, one of the features of our structural features of this tax driven tax system should be ability to pay and recognizing all possible expressions of ability to pay regardless of whether they are focused on income capital or consumption why because a broader number of taxable events will make systems more resilient you can indeed change your behavior in one or another option but you can't completely change your life and so the more taxable events the more the resilient is the system the rationale of the tax systems over the last 20 25 years we started to confuse the tax system from a financial function and rationale to somehow that pursues a huge number of regulatory goals that deprive him from its efficiency and creates hardships at constitutional level, EU level, etc. So my proposal is to strip down the tax system of these other goals, para fiscalité, regulatory goals, which create extra challenges and do not require the constitutional protections of the tax system and move it to other areas of law. The third thing, the third main structure of this tax system in the future is the use of data. Currently, we still produce data for tax administration. It doesn't need to be like that. Tax systems should not lead to the creation of data, but should be based on existing data, which is merely ported to the system. Everything should be fully automated. Moving from the current e tax returns, electronic tax returns, to A tax returns, automatic tax returns, and should be based on a pay-as-you-go system, where tax collection would take place at the moment of the ability to pay manifestation. For instance, consumption, if I go to the supermarket and I buy a package of milk, automatically I pay to the supermarket and the supermarket would immediately um, charge the fee on consumption and send it to the state. At the same time, the payment would be to the different, to the private party and to the state. Finally, human intervention. We should not forget that taxes will continue to have a strong intrusion on fundamental rights. And in any case, and at any point of the procedure, any tax technology driven system needs to cater for human intervention, assessing both the data that enters into the system as the system outcomes. So in my view, we should move to the enhanced cooperation to this intense exchange between the taxpayers and tax authorities to the zero cooperation model, where there is almost no interaction between the taxpayer and tax authority and everything moves automatically. Uh, in this new uh, model, tax authorities would change their role. They would no longer be administering the system as they are right now, but they would identify risk areas, intervene in controls and aud audits, and actively suggest changes to the legislator. This reduction on the role of tax authorities make them also capable of focusing on the, the issues that matter. So my paper, and uh, I, I would be pleased if more people could read it, advocates this paradigm shift from short, medium-term approach to long-term approach, from enhanced cooperation based in a lot of interaction between taxpayer and tax authority to zero cooperation based on the minimal, uh, minimal interface and interaction between the taxpayer and the tax authorities. But next slide, there's still a lot to be, to be done. And the paper, uh, the following slide uh, in the paper maps all of these research areas that still need to be uh, explored. Namely, what ability, what should be, 
what should be the manifestations of ability to pay that the system should take into account which personal data needs to be imported, which money flows should be targeted, how to translate legal language into binary language, and how to ensure taxpayers' rights in this new environment. Finally, and the final word, I coincide with Professor Pasquale Pistona that spoke before me, and it's the importance of abiding to the rule of law. Despite all of these technologic innovations, taxes, will, even if smoother, even if less present, even if uh, with anesthesia that technologies allow, taxes will continue to be a restriction on the right of property, on the taxpayer's fundamental rights. And accordingly, all associated proceedings and procedures have to abide by the rule of law strictly. I do not see any opposition between a zero cooperation model and a strict, uh, a strict application of the rule of law. Many thanks for the invitation to be present at the seminar and best, wish best wishes for the rest of the event.